What's happening, everybody? It's me again. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. You're live on the Demonologist UK live stream right here on the HAPRC network. And boy, oh boy, have we got some juicy juiciness for you this week. Got some. It's, it's going to be mad. It's going to be mad. We're joined this week by Justin um, from Spirits of the Somerset. We're going to be talking to him about all of his investigations and stuff that he's been up to. But first, first got some big news for you guys for everybody that's been waiting for the t-shirts just had word back from our official sponsor from Catface merch and they should be ready by the end of next week so i've teamed up with an official sponsor Catface merch sent all the designs over with all this coronavirus going around at the moment it's all about supporting local businesses so when that's up and running should be by the end of the week 100% of the, the, the profits that are going to go to that company because it's all about supporting your local businesses. Now, for everybody, just remember, we are collecting for the National Autistic Society. I still have the GoFundMe page going. If you do want to donate to that, and it'll be very, very appreciated if you can, head over to the Facebook page. That's all the W's dot Facebook.com forward slash the Demonologist UK. Right at the top, it's pinned right at the top, is the GoFundMe. Head over there, donate anything you can, because it all goes to a great, great, great cause. Now, once again, like I said, we're joined by Justin tonight. We're going to grab him on in two seconds, and we're going to get down to the complete juiciness of tonight's show. So, are you ready? I am. Justin, welcome along. Hey, how are you doing, Dave? Yeah, I'm not too bad. How you been? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah? Everything all good? You look like you're uh, ready for your investigation tonight. Uh, well, what normally happens is I sort of scramble just before I go out the door because the kids are a nightmare to go to sleep. So one of them's probably still up now. He'll, he might come down and be. he might get involved in the, uh, in the live feed. But yeah, no, it's a bit more <laughs> of a scramble to get out of the door sometimes. I know how you feel, mate. I know how you feel. Yeah. I'm a father of five, so I know exactly how you really? feel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's craziness. I'm surprised. I'm surprised my little ones ain't coming down asking questions already. But yeah. <laughs> but honestly, it's great to have you on. We've been waiting for Thank a little you. while. Me and you had a little case back uh, a little while ago. I think it was last year with the Mimic. Yeah, it was so about that was... this time last year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a quite a good one, actually. I enjoyed yeah. that. It was quite good. Right. So let's get into this. Now, you are an avid investigator there is a lot of teams out there that you know they investigate they go on the event now and again you you're at you and your team are at a lot yeah i mean at the moment the teams sort of just consist of um my uh, my wife cheryl mm-hmm. and me um so because obviously because we got the kids only one of us goes out and that's me at the moment and mm-hmm. i'm going out about three times a week so generally a wednesday uh friday and saturday around eight o'clock we used to go out later, um, but eight o'clock is better because I, I, I don't really want to be staying out all uh, night, really. No. So I'm, I'm going out later, but obviously that's because we're live here and then I'll be going live later on. So where are you heading over tonight? It says a graveyard on your thing. Obviously, yeah, is it somewhere it's, close? It's, I don't like to give, obviously, the locations away. Yeah. But it's a nice little um, graveyard. Um, I don't know if there's a much history there, but I, I people that I know that go there, so it's very spooky. And mm-hmm. I've been there in the day and it's just got a sort of a spooky feel to it. So I'm just going to have a sort of a look around and see what, what I can feel with it. It's quite close. So <clears throat> it takes sort of 25 minutes to get there. That's so not too bad. There. Yeah. That's not too bad. No, it's, it means uh, on this show, I've already stated plenty of times. I don't think graveyards are haunted apart from the people that, you know, you get, you get that. These, what they call the, uh, the, the, um, the guardians of the graveyard. Yeah. Sort of thing. yeah. I mean, I think that you're that's... probably right there, yeah. Mm. But it, it doesn't stop the feeling of when you're at a graveyard. Yeah, I think it's more the fact that, you know, there's the sort of perception that you're in the graveyard and it's spooky and if it's dark and it's sort of misty, it's given that sort of feel to it, really. I mean, yeah, mm. you don't necessarily um, find the spirits there. Um, 
you know i mean i've, I've been to a few and i've, I've had so sort of probably like i went to a, a, a chapel the other day uh with a, a friend of mine martin um he invited me along there and yeah. we had knocking we had a massive bang but there's said to be a, a ghost of a, the lady cleaner that's um uh she died and she had a lot of involvement in the church and mm-hmm. there's also a, a Spanish um, pirate there as well. So we oh, had a cool. lot of noises within the church. But I think in graveyards themselves, like you said, it's hard to say whether you've got that sort of um, spirit there unless it's some sort of guardian or something, you know, like a, yeah. a monk or some sort of protector. Area, yeah. It? Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Just going to do a quick roll call. Uh, Shouts out to Kathy. How are you doing, Kathy? Welcome along. Out to my brother and my partner in crime. Out to Mr. Ben Winfield. How are you doing? Yeah. And out to the boss lady. Out to Jane. How are you doing? I caught Jane's. I don't know if you caught it last night. Jane and Neil done um, a summoning last night at the centre. It was pretty crazy. I caught that last night. It was quite cool. Right. So, of all the places you investigated, all the places you've been out, I mean, um, I know that you wasn't always with spirits of Somerset. Um no. We're not going to go into that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but of all the places you've been at, what, what what place stands out in your mind and why? Why does it stand out? Um, well, I think the place that lately has stood out for me is the chapel I went to the other day, um, mm-hmm. just because it's the first place I've ever actually been to where we haven't sort of – I mean, I know I use, like, lots of apps and gadgets and things, yeah. Um, but obviously, I, I mean, you know, I'm – only learning and obviously there are other ways but where we went there the other day we had lots of taps and a massive bang that we couldn't explain mm-hmm. um and there is obviously history there and i love history when you can sort of use that history to sort of um correlate with it yeah. um but obviously other places i've been to i like um uh, the castle i was at the other day which is um a sort of a local castle around where i am just cause, okay. again because it's just got the history with it really because it's, mm. it's all well and good going to places like like a wood or something, but unless you can tie that history to it, it's a bit sort of pointless, really. Yeah. So yeah. Sort of, if, go on, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was going to say history plays a massive part in it. Yeah. And I've, I've sort of, when I've, when I've spoken to people before, other investigators that I have on the show, I like the approach where they sort of go there and investigate and collate this information. And then they then afterwards sort of then get to the point where they uh they then sort of look into it and start researching based on the information that they've got um i'm yeah. strongly against these people that go out and investigate already knowing what's there and what's what's supposed to be there because i think to me in the paranormal world at the moment the way things are auto suggestion plays a massive part in everything that everybody does mm. i mean how do you sort of work it do you look at the history beforehand or do you go afterwards well initially i would like to not know the history of it um mm. but because i'm going there on my own if i need to be able to relay that history to people i need to know it yeah so it's, it's a bit hard really i try not to give i try not to give anything away and i try and let whatever's there try and sort of relay that back to me like i went to um, a place called kit's grave and it's yeah. basically it's got it's more of more of a sort of a folklore myth. There's a lot of sort of tales about the, the why it's there. There's a couple of different stories. One's about um, a young gypsy girl or an elderly gypsy lady, and they didn't know that she was basically found face down in a well in a church um, in one of in one of the little um, villages. But mm-hmm. because they didn't know where she where she where she was from, they met the the. It, crosses the border of three counties so they basically put her at the edge of the, the three counties oh, okay uh, the other um tale it was was it was a highwayman called kit which is why it's called kit's grave and he was said to have been hung there all and right when i went there it was just really spooky um and i think it's just because i'm on my own and you know you've got a torch looking one way with the rig i've got the torch going one way and everything's yeah. dark behind you. You sort of think when you hear stuff, you think, "What's that?" But the only relevant thing I had was just on on the app. It came back. I asked it. Um, I can't remember what the question was. And I thought I said something like, "You know," I left, I can't remember what I said, but it came back with the name Kit. I'm sure I asked like the question, like, "Oh, 
you know, who was buried here or who was hung here. And it came back yeah. saying Kit. But that's the only sort of relevant thing I can take from there. Um, but yeah. it was it was a, it was quite good. And I think for people watching, it was kind of good because I was trying to sort of tell the story without trying to give too much away, really. Because yeah. otherwise, then it's just, if I say, if I write all up about it, then it's just a bit, you know, a bit boring, yeah. I suppose. I agree. I agree. Chat room's going crazy. Uh, shout out to Vaughn. Uh, good. She's saying good evening, Damon and Justin. Evening, Vaughn. It's good to have you locked in. One of the regulars to the show. It's good to have you in. Uh, another regular out to Annie as well. Annie's been helping me out over the last uh, f a few weeks. But a big shout out to you. Out to Louisa. How you doing, Louisa? I spent the other half. And who else we got? Oh, we got Jacqueline. Shouts out to Jacqueline. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Let's put that one up. Actually, Jacqueline, she's going to be a guest on my show in about three or four weeks' time. Looking forward to that. Also, we've got a comment here from – this one's from Tasha Miller. Um, now, I know it comes up Facebook user, but I have the chat next to me, so I can yeah. identify these people. She's saying, um, I agree, graveyards aren't really haunted. Also, I hate when people go somewhere and no history of it. It's feeding the medium. I agree. I agree. Um, I think – but I think where Justin's coming from is obviously if he's going there alone, it, it sort of plays a different part as when if you've gone in there with with a team. Um, so, yeah, I, I see a video on your Facebook the other day. Is I don't know if this was Kit's grave. Is that the one? Is is it you guys who went to that really massive hole in the floor? I went to, um, no, that's um, an old burial site. That's a different place altogether. Kit's grave was basically... I had to do a lot of information to find exactly where it was because yeah. it's not really list sort of well listed. Mm -hmm. I had to find out basically where the county lines were, but where I, that one was with um, Cliff and Sandra, and yeah. that was an old um, uh, so some burial remains were found there over ten thousand years ago. So that's a place called uh, Avelines Hole, which is yeah. in um, uh, sort of its sort of Cheddar area. But oh, it was okay. a bit difficult there because obviously I couldn't get in to get any reception and they were in further. But I'm hoping to do some more more stuff with those. They're quite keen to sort of come at me and do a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I was watching the live feed and it, it looked really interesting because with a place yeah. like that, obviously when you're looking down this massive hole, acoustics are going to play a massive part in the sort of things that you're getting because if there's a noise at the end of the hole, it's obviously going to reverberate all the way out and it's going to be hard for you to sort of pinpoint where that noise has come from. Yeah. I mean, I think the issue we had was Cliff was right down inside. I mean, it didn't go in that far and you couldn't go. Uh, there was basically like some a metal um, uh, thing to stop you going any further. Yeah. Um, but Cliff was right down inside and you couldn't really hear him. And then mm. obviously Sandra was a bit further up. And literally I had, I was like, the, the cave entrance was like there and I was like right outside because my reception just kept going. But yeah. it's just really hard to hear them. And I think also if you think about, because I, I also think about like, you know, different languages 10,000 years ago, they wouldn't have spoken any English. So are we thinking about like, um, you know, communication barriers? Are we, you know, that sort of thing? Mm. yeah i mean it's funny you bring that up um i've i was writing a um a blog this week um for a friend of mine over in uh, tennessee in america um based on the adaptation of the way spirits are, are adapting nowadays because if we actually look at the things on the surface level we're using iphone apps now we're using k2 meters we're using yeah. sls cameras and and this this box that does this and, and rem pods I mean, if you're talking about spirits that are hundreds of years old, even if you go back to spirits that are 40 or 50 years old, they wouldn't know how these things work. Exactly. Mm. So it, it's the that adaptation of spirit is what they see. Obviously, they're watching us and how we work things, and they're adapting themselves. You know, it's human nature, mm. you know, and a lot of the spirits that we're picking up are human, so they will adapt. I mean, how do you sort of – how do you sort of get to that point in an investigation where you sort of go, right, are the spirits communicating with me? Do I have to adapt the way that I'm working to sort of make it easier for them to communicate with me? Yeah, I mean, I mean, at the moment, I'm still learning. I mean, I'm trying to sort of get what I can sort of get what I can do. Um, yeah. 
like I was at where I was at the um, castle the other day. I didn't feel like anything was happening there. I mean, it was a lovely place. Mm. Um, I didn't feel like they wanted to communicate through the any of the apps I had. Um, they didn't touch yeah. any of the equipment. Um, so I was just sort of trying to ask them politely. Um, you know, I don't have because it's myself. Um, mm. I can't use things like um, dowsing rods because I've obviously. I've got nothing to stand my phone on to yeah. you know, record myself. Yeah. So I'd like to do that sort of dowsing rods. If I, if there was someone else, I'd probably do that on another occasion. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's just a bit tricky when it's just me on my own. It's just a bit tricky, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's investigating on your own. I suppose you take out the element of hysteria as well. Um, I find hysteria plays a massive part in any investigation. If there's more yeah. than, one person there um but the problem is is your mind plays tricks on you you know what i mean you have the corner of the eye syndrome you yeah. have the uh what i like to call the ink blot effect you know when you see things um it, it's like uh looking at a cloud i might see a dragon you might see a train yeah that, that sort of thing but i think you going out investigating your own it does take away that hysteria sort of thing i mean have you not have you not sort of thought about, you know, maybe I'm going to get a medium on board and that's, and your sort of plans for the future for Somerset Paranormal? Yeah, well, I, I mean, obviously I, I can see spirit a little bit myself. Mm. Um, I don't really, I'm not really able to sort of use it much. And I don't meditate or anything that much. Um, yeah. But I have sort of put a, a little thing out there to ask if anybody wants to come and join, which is why um, Cliff and Sandra have sort of come along on an investigation. Um I don't know of any mediums in the air. I mean, that's something I could think of. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it is worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, if anybody out there is in the Somerset area, get hold of Justin, get hold of him and join the team, join up. I mean, it, it's, it's great what you're doing. I wanted to ask you as well, you know, Facebook live, it's a massive change for everyone in the paranormal world and everybody I've had on a, as a team, I always ask them the same question. How do you think Facebook live has changed the way in which you investigate? Um, I think it's, it's really good because you've got, I mean, like I go out and I don't say I'm here. I sort of say like we're here because everyone's with you and everyone's sort of anticipating what's going to happen. Sort of everyone's involved essentially. You know, yeah. people are talking to you while you're doing it, so you got, you've got that communication with other people. So, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I am essentially somewhere on my own, but like people are there with me watching, and you know that they're, they're, you know, they've got my concerns, um, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, and I find as well with Facebook Live, um, I'm, I'm coming from a, a background of I, I started investigating 14 years ago. So I remember when it was literally like, I wanted massive Sony cameras that you had to hold just to get yeah. your evidence and stuff like that. So I think it's, it's dramatically changed everything. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask you a question that I always ask all the investigators that come on this, on this show and all the mediums that come on this show, because it's something that I find is quite controversial. It's good to see people's point of view. I mean, what's your take on orbs? What do you think about orbs? Um, my take on orbs is, I mean, look, I always get people say when I'm doing an investigation, I, they say there's an orb. I never mm. see them. I may occasionally see them in videos and things, but I can't really say it is an orb. Yeah. Um, and the, the previous person I was with before, they took some pictures, but it could have been, there was a lot of them in the air. It could have been moisture. Yeah. Um, so there, obviously you've got moisture, dust, insects. There are a lot of um, factors that can get involved. I mean, yeah. unless I saw a, like a coloured one, you know, a certain coloured one come towards me or something, mm -hmm. um, then I'd probably think, yeah, that's definitely an orb. But um, I haven't actually, personally myself, I would say I haven't seen an orb yet. Yeah. The only, thing I've, the only things I've seen, I've seen a couple of shadows. Yeah. And I've seen, in the same place, I've seen like a, some sort of, mist go across around about twice it, on two separate what uh, last year and this year roughly about the same time oh okay so like a um a sort of like a um what do they call it it will come back to me it will come back to me <laughs> it was like just like a, it was a it wasn't very big it was literally probably about 
that sort of big. Yeah. And it just sort of it looked if you imagine like what tumbleweed looks like, it looks a bit it looked a bit like tumbleweed, but it was all right. You couldn't really see anything there apart from like very sort of white like white wisps of things. Like yeah. A, you know, yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what what people call it. It will come back to me. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh, your missus uh, is comment. She's saying, "Out to yeah. Cheryl." She's saying, "Mostly dust, could be refraction." Yeah, she said, "Orbs move in a certain way and move differently, and different shapes too." Yeah. I mean, it, it's great that you sort of have that sort of connection. Do you find it? I mean, when you do eventually start going out and investigating with Cheryl when you got your team together and that I mean it's great that at the moment you're sort of learning are there sort of like between you and your partner are there sort of certain bits of equipment or apps that you turn to first you sort of go no right we're going to go with this one first because this is my favorite um well obviously we've got like this sort of the standard sort of setup so k2s cat balls mm -hmm. um I mean there is other stuff we'd like as well but it's you know it's, it's sort of getting them um mm -hmm. The apps I tend to like is like the Necrophonic. Um, yeah. But I mean, if, if we could get it a different way, like if you can get things like Nox and things like that, it's, that's more, I would say that's, you know, it, it, if you're going to somewhere where there's got history yeah. and you can get something over the app telling you, like one, a good, a good question is some, uh, cause Penny from another site always says, or oh, ask who the, who, who the King is at the time. Yeah. So you could, and I, I heard the other day I did hear Philip, but I mean, it's hard to say whether that is correct or not because it could just be, you know, sometimes you're hearing it saying Philip, or mm -hmm. um, it's hard to say sometimes. So it, if you get good um, sort of relevance clarification from that, that's good. But if you yeah. can get like, you know, if you, uh, like the uh, chapel I was knocking, I said, "Can you copy this? Knock, knock, knock," and it knocked twice. And for yeah. me, that was that. You know, that was really impressive. So sometimes, I mean apps aren't necessary but for i mean like for a visual thing for people watching on facebook it's good for them to see like definitely cat balls going off if you can get them to do you know the cat if you can you answer that yes or no for a cat ball lighting yeah. up so that sort of stuff is good yeah no i mean so your approach to it is do you sort of go with all right i'm going to try and find a skeptical or a a natural solution for what's happening yeah. if i cannot find that solution it's got to be something paranormal yeah, I mean, we we don't go, you know, if if we see something, we try. Like I, I was, I saw something the other night coming back from the castle. And I was telling some other people about it not long ago. Basically, yeah. as I left, I could see again. Like I think Ben said in the comments, it's a wisp, and I could see wisps in the back view mirror in yes. like behind my car. And mm -hmm. thinking about it now, as I was thinking, how what could that have been? But thinking about it now, it could have been a bit of mist behind the car and above the um, registration plate, there is a white light. So it could have been yeah. that. So could have been. Now, as I'm thinking about it, I'm trying to think what it could be. And I, you know, I'd rather try and take a sort of skeptical approach to it rather than just go, yeah, that's definitely, you know, definitely paranormal. hundred percent. But some investigations 100%. I've done and I've had nothing and you just think, Oh, you know, it would have been nice to just sort of get some clarification there, but you, you just can't get it every time. No, no, it's true. Um, uh, with Cheryl's been putting up, I think she wants to, <laughs> she's saying uh, it's all about the question you asked as well. Yeah. Um, the answers, she's saying the answers need to be validating to historic yeah. situations. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. Like, yeah, you guys she know does, what she does. Doing. She does most of the um, searching of the places and does a lot of yeah. the history behind it. It's it's crazy to think because if if you look on the scale of what spirits of Somerset Paranormal are, are, are at at the moment with just you two guys, it's such a small scale. But mm. you're getting evidence that major teams, bigger teams, you know, we're talking about haunted happenings and all these sort of things. They're getting the same sort of evidence that you are, okay. but they're such a major scale. It's great to see a smaller team oh, sort of coming through that and bringing this evidence to, to the forefront do you know what i mean yeah i mean uh, that's i mean that's all we've ever wanted to do really try i mean i've as i've started doing it it's become you know more than a hobby to me it's quite I, i'm quite sort of passionate about it now I and mean, mm -hmm. i've always liked history but i think yeah. if if we can get stuff that i mean i'm not going to say we're going to find that evidence that proves it but it would be nice just to try and 
prove it. There's just so many skeptical people out there yes. that you're not going to just, you know, you're not going to prove it to everybody. Everyone's got their own beliefs and you can't, you know, you can show somebody something, but you can't, you know, you can't change their opinion. But there's, no. like, there's so many things, you know, you can, you can make a video and you can change it, you know, you know, CGI or whatever you can, you know, you can make it look like something happened. So it's debatable what's real and what isn't. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I agree with you with the whole trying to sort of you can't change people's opinions, you can't force their opinions. I mean, in my line of work, nine times out of ten, I'm an occultist, I'm a satanic worshipper, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm the devil reincarnate, you know, yeah. go away. You know, it, it, it's it's the same old, same old. I'm not there to change people's it's, opinion. Well, it's just a label essentially, and I think you, you people are judging you based on a label, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. We live in that snowflake age where everyone has mm. to have a label. Yeah. You know, I don't see the uh, demonology is my f official title, but I work with occultology as well. You know, um, and work with all things Nordic, Egyptian, Persian, mm. Mesopotamian. There's it's so much stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, I, I just don't like sort of tying it down. And it, it's great to see, like you said, uh, you don't want to change people's opinion. You don't want to force their opinion. You'll show them what you've got, and they make their own mind up. Yeah. And to think, if you actually think, because you like history, if we was doing what we was doing now, say, 60, 70, 80 years ago, we'd probably get burned at the stake for being witches. We would do, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, we'd, we'd or be, like, put in a, a, a mental hospital and lobotomized or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, electroconvulsive therapy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's absolutely crazy. I well, mean, it's like on the... You know, like when you go on the investigation, you get all your apps, all your stuff out, and you're asking them to, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? And they're saying demon, witch, and that sort of stuff. And they're probably referring to me, you know, or, yeah. or you know, the investigator, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. No, do you know what? Do you know what? I've never actually thought of it from that perspective because we're the, to them who are, who are around 60, 70 years ago, what we're doing is witchy. It is demon, mm. like demony. Yeah. Like they, they could be accusing us of doing it i mean i've never actually thought about that yeah so yeah no it's just it's just crazy it's, it's just it's just madness but um with that sort of i find that the paranormal has become more acceptable nowadays as much as we have a lot more skeptical we'll have a lot a lot of skeptical people around there's a lot less nowadays than there was when i started 15 14 15 years ago i mean do you find it easier to sort of convince people with the evidence that you pick up now? Um, well, I, th I think you, I think you find the people that generally do watch sort of the paranormal stuff, all this sort of stuff, mm. are people that are generally open-minded. Yeah. Um, so that you know they're open-minded to the concepts of, you know, what things could be. I mean, I would, to be honest with you, I think if I if I would say two years ago I was very skeptical. Mm. And I've sort of changed my opinion. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older now, or I, I think it's probably because of things I've seen and because I, I do, I've had sort of images in my head and I've sort of been able to tell people things. So I think I'm more open. And I think yeah. this is, you know, for people have to be open minded to sort of um, take it in, you know, take it in and believe it. Um, like, like we were saying, you can't change people's opinion. And if they're closed minded, you know, mm. then I, I was. I think um, one of the ladies on H A um, R P C. She said that people have come to her. I can't remember her name. I do apologise. Um, yeah. But she said, she said that some people have come to her that are completely skeptical and said they've seen ghosts. Yeah. But then they still don't believe it afterwards. Yeah. So I'm, I know a few people like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know my my dad. Um, oh really? He, yeah, he used to be part of the team. And okay. He, he used to be part of had... the team, and he's still skeptical. Yeah, yeah. No, this is the thing. We yeah. had this dynamic in my team when I was running this team. It was called Truth Paranormal. I had my mediums. I had my tech experts. Uh, I used to run a team, and my dad's sole job was to be Mister Skeptical, and it was okay. great. Well, that's that's a good way to be about it, really. Yeah, and we yeah. was at rough and airfield once um, over in Suffolk, and we was in the control tower at the top. And it was just, it was hilarious because my dad just fell over and he's got up and he, and he was like, what's wrong? He was like, oh, I felt like someone pushed me. And I was just like, 
What do you mean it felt like something? He went, oh, it must have been a really strong wind. It's really windy <laughs> up here. You know, we're, we're inside, Dad. You know? yeah. we're, we're inside. <laughs> so, has, he, he, has he ever um, said, no, it definitely it was a ghost? Or does he keep sticking to the wind uh, decision? Once, once. Oh. But I think that was... He doesn't really talk about it, so it's one of them things where I don't think he had a sceptical answer for what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose I suppose for some people, if they can't explain it, it might play on their mind a bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just. I think people have to take that sceptical approach. You have to look at the logic first, and then once you decide that there are, is no logical explanation for the fact that you've just had six chairs stack on top of each other and wedged himself under a ceiling. Yeah. That's when you sort of go, okay, we need to start like looking in the revenues of the paranormal now. Mm. But yeah. Right. So we're going to go to a quick ad break. Um, and then after the ad break, we're going to get into a couple of parts of the show. Like I like to do with everyone that comes on. Um, if you've got any questions, guys, for Justin and for the Spirits of the Somerset Paranormal team, hold them. We're going to be back after this quick advert break, and you can ask all the questions you like after this. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. And welcome back to the other side. Welcome back, Demos. Yes, Justin, I know I've named my listeners. It's very sad, but they are Demos. So okay. <laughs> I know I know you call them the Demos. <laughs> Everyone says you're really sad for naming the people that lock into your show. I'm like, well, you know, I appreciate them. I like them when they lock in. You know, it's, it's yeah. great to have the support out there. I'm going to quickly just run through a couple of things on the chat. Uh, at Annie, she's saying that um, she's been accused of being a cultist a couple of times this is a total okay. lone wolf <laughs> ben's agreeing as well it seems to be like the uh the go-to thing when people don't understand what's going on so you know <laughs> ben's uh commenting on the new hairstyle he's saying not sure i'll be a scholar with my new mini ponytail <laughs> i mean i'll tell you mate soon the, the show will be hosted by bjorn penny i'm telling you i'm going for the nordic look so um, out to Kathy, she's saying the uh, spirit upstairs doesn't communicate with my daughter anymore since she become pagan. He said she will get in trouble for being a witch, which, it, I mean, right. you introduced me. Like, every day's a school day. Like you said, they could be looking at us as witches instead of us looking at them as witches. So that's something mm-hmm. I've never thought of it um, in that sense. Um, out to Vonnie, she's saying, I like to have skeptics on board. It's good to see what their opinions are, like both sides of a situation. 100% agree with that. 100% agree. Out to Annie's as well, saying it's good that people are questioning stuff, though. It's leasing to competently and through paranormal investigation methods. So, yeah, I mean, you seem to have the uh, the vote. So that's that's good. That's good. Now, we've got well, the second half of the, of the show. We like to go into a couple of little things I like to do. Um, and we get the questions from the people that are locked in. So if anyone's got any questions for uh, Justin, just hit them up and we will get to them, I promise. Now, the first part of the show, the first part of the, that I like to do is called What's in Your Box? Now, the way this works, you're sent out to your favorite haunted location. You are given a camera and a torch, and you can take one other bit of equipment with you. What would you like to take and why? Um, I 
I would say some like some food, but <laughs> I do like my food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know really. I think big bag of Haribo. <laughs> not not uh, not sweets like some sandwiches or something. Um, <laughs> I don't know because like cat balls maybe. I'm not sure really. Mm. I mean, because obviously you work a lot on Facebook Live. It'd be good to have something visual with you. You know, like you said, the oh, cat yeah. ball, the rem oh, pods. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that had to be in the box. <laughs> 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 you know it's whatever it's like it's basically i like to get um especially with investigators i like to see what's their go-to sort of thing you know yeah. like uh, the one thing enough, they can yeah. take you know I think um, i'm just sort of used to all the stuff i have um i think yeah. that might be you know sometimes a you know a bad thing because you get you you do get content with what you've got and you yeah. tend, tend to start thinking outside the box like cheryl's found a few things yeah um, but it's hard taking that concept concept out. She sort of like thought found some experiments you can do, um, mm -hmm. but it's hard taking those experiments outside. So yeah, no, something we could do. Sense. I could do maybe on the inside investigation if I ever do mm -hmm. anything back out in the in the um, in the playhouse again. Yeah, I tell you what. I think I watched that live um, with you going um, when you was inside the playhouse. Um, yeah, and. I'm I'm one of these people. Old school's best school, you know. All the old school techniques, all this new stuff. It just it's all for show. That's what it is. Um, I think you should go like with the old school sort of, you know, talcum powder, trigger object sort of experiments. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. had a lot of teams been reporting to me saying that that is really working well at the moment. Okay. So it might be something to think about. Yeah. Uh, at Sam Pert, it's good to have him uh, locked in. I had Sam on the show a little while ago. Brilliant guy to talk to. I mean, he, he blew my mind. So, John, yeah. your comment with the whole uh, them seeing us as witches. Blew, blew, blew. This is why I do this, because things just blow my mind. It's just great. Well, I think um, we all learn off of each other, I think. Yeah. We, and We've all got our own ideas, and we can relate yeah. those to each other and work, work with each other, can't we? Yeah, and this is what we was talking about to to Russell Old last week. We was talking about the actual true meaning of para uni. It's the fact that we all learn from each other and we share with each other yeah. instead of trying to be in competition to be the best. Mm, that's true. Um, Bonnie's saying, hi, Justin. Couldn't you make something to stand your dowsing rods in so you don't have to hold them? Um, yeah, the dowsing rods we have at the moment aren't the best. Cheryl ordered them offline, and they're very mm – -hmm. they're like more like a car aerial – at the moment right. they're like you, you they, they they come in and like a little stick and you open yeah. them up and then bend them down and they don't seem that good so i think mm. we need to get some more but yeah that's that's something we can think of and maybe i could put like some pipes in the ground or something and mm -hmm. put them inside so yeah that's a good idea actually yeah yeah the, um you can get i don't know if it's on amazon or ebay but you can get dowsing rod holders okay um where they're sort of like shaped in like a V, so you only have to hold them with one hand. Okay, check right. that one out. Yeah. Um, next part. Now, this part, I mean, this is a brand new one for me, uh, and I really like this one. This is called the paranormal dinner party. Now, oh. you're about to sit down with one famous dead person, right? They have to be famous. They have to be dead, right? And you can ask them as many questions as you want because you're about to have a meal with them. Who would it yeah. be and why? Um, That's some really interesting answers to this one. I, th I think I'd have to go for someone like, I don't know, like sort of Julius Caesar or someone. To my no, mind. that's a cool answer. I like yeah. that. I like that. It'd, it'd be great to pick his mind. Actually, sort of maybe sort of like maybe Romulus and Remus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, you can tell that you like your history going yeah. back to that like, one. I remember being in school, and I think one of my favourite subjects was history because the history teacher we had was a, a, a history teacher called Mr. Pratt, uh, <laughs> really, really nice guy. Um, mm. But he just he was he was the only teacher I ever met that yeah. got so excited about everything, and he'd get up on the table and like you know, like wave his hands about, and you know like he was sort of like <laughs> you know made everything fun. Um, yeah. But then, obviously, when it got to sort of secondary school, uh, it became a bit more mundane because it was all about sort of World War Two and propaganda and stuff. Yeah, but it's, it's still interesting. But yeah, I mean, he he made it really fun for um, history, and I think I've always, you know, always loved history. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, the answers we've had so far, I've had someone say they want to sit down with Derek Cora. Um, I've had some really cool answers. Derek's come up twice, actually. But when you said about Julius Caesar, that's someone I'd like to sit down and have a chat with. Yeah, because I think... Find out, you know, how yeah. his brain works. Yeah, because I think he would be... Well, he, he probably wouldn't want to talk to me for a start. <laughs> you probably think I'm sort of a lower class. Mm-hmm. Um, but you you could sort of ask him like when the, like the the daggers were coming towards him, what he felt, sort of thing. You know, what was his feelings? You know, exactly, exactly. Uh, out to Ronda Paolo saying, "Can I can I ask a question? I've been having tried to ask for you. Fire away, we'll get it done." Um, and he's saying, um, "Dowsing works by using the connection of your intent to that what well, what you're attempting to find the source of. So taking away from the body wouldn't work." It'd be like taking the battery out of a remote. Okay. She said, however, I suppose you could use something like a quartz holder to amplify the energy of the environment. Okay. So, yeah, no, I mean, I'm not really expert in dowsing and pendulum stuff like that. That's not my field of study. Um, I know people – I'll, I'll ask the questions, Justin, and I'll come back to you on that one because I know okay. a few people that do that. Um, Rhonda's saying, uh, she's asking, I pass souls with hospice. I get awakened at the new moon and full moons with the vibration that wakes me in the night. The vibration has been subtle because I notice it. Um, that, that would make sense. I've heard of that happening before. Um, people that are attached to spirits that have, have passed, um, they develop that attachment. I've heard it, this, this comes up. Yeah, this has come up a few times. It's all to do with um, soul connection and attachment in that sense. Um, but, yeah, if if you want some more answers on that, Rhonda, uh, post me a personal message afterwards and we'll have a chat. i um, going to get some questions over to Justin. Uh, ben saying moon echoes as well, which is what I was going to explain when you messaged me. But, yeah, we'll get into that. Um, now, the main thing for me is obviously you being so interested in history. What turned you to the paranormal? What actually had had what what made you sort of go? Do you know what? I'm going to take what I know and I'm going to flip it on its head. Well, obviously I'd seen things on the tail, like most haunted and stuff like that, and I'd never really. I I was interested in it, but yeah. I'd never really got into it, and it was only helping someone else out that I got into it. Um, mm. So I think that's what got me into it. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna have to get a cable in a minute. Hang on a second. That's right. That's no problem. That's no problem. Don't forget, guys, as well. We are still collecting for the National Autistic Society. Please head over to my Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash the Demonologist UK. Head over there. I'm gonna stick it up down there for you, just like that. Head over there and donate. It'd be great for you to donate. So, yeah, so it was... sorry, go on. No, yeah, I was just going to say, like, so it, it, it's somebody else that sort of turns you towards the paranormal, and it, it's, it's become like like everybody that's involved in the paranormal. It's not a hobby; it's a, an obsession, completely. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I started helping someone out, and then I got re-involved with it. Started making a lot of connections, mm. and then obviously, then started doing my own thing with Cheryl. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just sort of you know one of those things so now i sort of devote a lot of nights going out really what's the craziest on my own happened to you when you've been out in investigation what's the craziest thing that's happened to you joe one of them situations where something happens yeah like we all know when you go out investigating you get knocking you get rapping you get breaths and all this but what thing has actually happened that's made you sit there and go what the actual hell yeah um i think again it was probably at the chapel the other day when we had that we we i think we asked for a, a noise and then suddenly there was a massive bang mm. um and we went to have a look to see what it was and we just couldn't fathom out what it was mm-hmm. you know i mean i've yeah. been I, when I, normally when i go out I'm, I'm normally out outside um so generally i'm out in the dark so generally if i hear something i've got to try and work out what it is like like i was when i was at kit's grave it was literally some um tree branches rubbing together or you know things like that you got to try and you hear a noise and you've got to try and sort of work out what it is before you yeah. panic yourself yeah i mean i remember uh my, my i remember being at drake Clow tunnels 
I think I've told this story before, but I'll let you sort of, I want to get your sort of opinion on it. Um, it was at Drake Low Tunnels. Uh, we had public there. It was me and my brother, who was in my team as well, who was a national medium. And we're at the end of this tunnel, and you can hear like this little scatter of these little footsteps. Um, and this big, big, burly guy was with us, and he was like, oh, no, that's just rats. And it's like, no, no, honestly, my brother's going, it's children. It's children running about. And he's like, no, no, it's rats. I said, all right, then what we'll do is we're going to go and set up some uh, motion sensors. But what we've done is we set them up on cups, so they were high enough for the rats to pass under so they wouldn't sell. Yeah. These 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 motion sensors are going off one at a time, turning them off, and that is like no, honestly, mate, I don't think it's rats. And he's like, well, I, I think it's rats. I said, well, if it's if it's children, if you don't believe it's children, then call out and find out because if it's not, then they won't answer. So this, he honestly, he was a big guy. He must have been at least six foot two. He must have had arms like my thighs. You know, he was, he was massive, right? <laughs> and he went, um, if there's any children there. Um, can you come forward and speak to us? And exact that that exact moment, we just heard from the distance because Drake was like two and a half miles of like abandoned tunnels. We just heard from the distance this voice just went, "Mama, oh mate, my but I just my yeah. hair stood on end. I was just like, this guy run for two and a half miles all the way back to the beginning <laughs> and would not come back in. I'm telling yeah, you, I, I mean that's one of them situations where you go, what the hell? And it's just like, yeah. wow. Well, it's, it's kind of wow and cool at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's the first time I've actually experienced, like, I think I've experienced it before, but that's the first time I'm sort of aware of experiencing pure fear because what people don't realise is, you know when you see, like, these most haunted, you see these investigators where something happened and they'll scream. That's not fear. That's the element of surprise. Pure fear, you don't have any noises come out. You are frozen to the spot. You don't know what to do. You become disorientated. You start to get cold sweats. That's true fear. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you've experienced that? You know, where it's like true fear. Um, not yet, to be honest. Well, there's plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, I've not been anywhere yet where I've physically heard a voice. I've heard, you know, like you hear noises, mm -hmm. and like, I mean, obviously, when I'm on my own, it's obviously easier to try and depict out what they are. Obviously, when you're with other people, like I've been with other people, and they're like, oh, did you hear that? And you like, well, not really, mm -hmm. but you know, because sometimes someone hears something and you might not hear it. So, yeah, I think if I did, if I did get to that situation, I, I don't know what I would do. I think I'd be like, like you said, you'd be like frozen, thinking, yeah, oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is crazy. It is absolutely crazy when it does happen, and it's it's great to see that you you don't embellish things either. You know, there's plenty of. There's, there's teams out there, there's people out there in the paranormal, you say, oh, what's your scariest experience? And it'll just be something like, something so minor, but they just embellish it massively. Okay. Like you said, you just sat there and went, I've not really, not really experienced noise. It's, it's good to see that you're very down to earth with the way that you approach investigating. It's great. Um, Cheryl says, when your motion sensors... We're going off of that place a few weeks ago. You looked a bit sketchy. It's it's because I'm on my own. So I mean, <laughs> you've got to think when things are going off, and you think because generally you're at, outside, mm. you're thinking there's things going all around you, and there's there's been certain places where I thought everything's all around me. So you're you're going to get a bit sketchy, and yeah. that's where, you, like you said, your mind plays on you, and you've got to try mm -hmm. and think rationally what things are and why that's done that. <laughs> I can't believe she's calling you out though. I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to find that video. I'm gonna have to find it. <laughs> and to uh, Kathy, she's saying I have. Uh, I have as a child been chasing that feeling, but not had it since. I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of people experience things when they're younger. I mean, uh, Lorraine Warren did say it as well. She said it's a pure fact that most people are clairvoyant at the age of twelve. I mean, when you said about you, you see and you feel things, but you haven't sort of practiced your mediumship, do you feel that you have the gift to be able to do this? You mean, if you practice a bit more, would you be able to come medium mystical? I, I think if I did, I mean, I don't get a lot of time to do any meditation or anything. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people that literally, like, I mm. don't plan anything. I just go. Like, the other night I went out and I didn't have a lot of stuff charged, so it didn't help. But yeah. I started getting, like pains in my head and i started seeing like people but it's weird because i only see people from like the waist up yeah and they don't speak to me 
Um, they can show me things, but generally it's 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 really random how they show me stuff. And I've kind of guessed a few things. Yeah. Um, that people have been relate, you know, related to, and that's the only reason that I know, I I don't claim to be like a medium or anything. No. But that's the only reason I can say that there is something there because I've said things. To, I was watching a live once. Um, I can't remember the team, mm. and they were in a graveyard, and I said there's a lady and all you could see was like this light and she was trying to peer underneath it with her hand and she was oh, okay. trying to give a cross. And I, I said, there's someone trying to give you a cross. Yeah. And he said, Oh, that's funny. Cause I've just gone to the car to get my rose rosary beads. And he said, they've just broke. So it's wow. just things like that. And I just think there must be something there. Uh, Cause otherwise, why are these, all these different people popping in my head? If mm. I close my eyes and concentrate, it's just, you know, it's, it's just, I can't explain it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But I think, like you said, if I did meditate or something, um, then maybe that, that would sort of help it a bit more. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, from what I went through, because um, I did do a bit of medium mystical training, there's a lot of evidence out there from mediums and psychics that work in the field that say because we work so closely with the paranormal it's almost like a gift that's yeah. going to be given it sort of opens in up due course bit. yeah it's just something that you're going to learn over time yeah. it's like yeah working with the paranormal you're you're stimulating that third eye you're stimulating that chakra point that allows you to speak and interact and see these things so yeah. over time like working a muscle is just going to get stronger so um but yeah i mean it's something that I mean, I I did do my mediumship train, training training at to Annie saying you're a medium. I'm not a medium. <laughs> I don't ever claim I was. Uh, the, the words was a medium, and I've seen the dark side now, and I'm going to stay with the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> um, at to Rhonda, she said I never did when younger. I've opened up more during this helping souls pass. It's like wow, I have a green orb that follows me, and took a pic while passing a soul in that room. And saw two blue beings looking in on me. I caught it on a phone. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I'd like, I'd see, like to see you, it. Though, yeah, because yeah, you was mentioning about different coloured orbs when we mentioned about orbs earlier, didn't you? Yeah. Mm. I mean, it, I don't know. <laughs> That's a Ben saying, no, he's a large, you cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, I, like, I like what you guys are doing. I, I do lock into you guys quite a lot, and I, th I think it's it's nice to see people who are honest and down to earth. It's, and... it's no point trying to deceive people. You know? No, like if I wanted to, I could like you know get somebody else that no one would ever see, and they could just be around the corner throwing stuff or making noises. It's, there's no point. I, you know, I might as well. You know, yeah. It, it's there's no fun for me, and there's no no fun for anybody watching really. No, exactly. And at the end of the day, what you see is what you get. I've always said that to people. If I go to your house on a case and I see, and I feel nothing and I get nothing, then there's nothing there. Mm. And honesty has always been the best policy when it comes to the paranormal. Yeah, definitely. It has always been the best policy because at the end of the day, people embellish and you will get found out. At the end of the day, you will get found out. Um, right, so we're coming up to the end of the show. This is the part that I hand the show over to you. This is called okay. The Big Plug. You let people know how they can get hold of you, where they can catch you. Any live feeds, any interviews you've got coming up, it's in okay. your hands, Justin. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't got any other interviews coming up, but um, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, I normally go live on Facebook and TikTok around about 8pm. Um, and Tuesdays, I do do uh, tarot and oracle readings at 9pm on a Tuesday, but that's just on Facebook. And those right. are the only those are only two platforms I work on at the moment. And the Facebook page is the, hold on, I think I've got it somewhere around here. Yeah. It is uh Facebook.com forward slash spirits of Somerset, am I right? Yeah, yeah, that looks right, yeah. So if you want to ask Justin any questions, you want to check out his live feeds, which I highly recommend that you go and check them out. He's actually for everybody that's locking in a bit late, as soon as we finish here, he's putting his skates on. He's so, skating down yeah, the road 25 yeah. minutes and he's going to be live. So I've... once you finish watching this, guys, head yourself over to the Spirits of Somerset Facebook page and check out the live feed going out tonight. Yeah. I was going to say, I've literally got to get my socks on. <laughs> 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 I mean, well, we wish you good luck with the investigation tonight, Thank Justin. Thank you. 
Uh, you've been a great guest on the show. What I would like to do is, um, I don't think I've got any slots later uh, left now until the end of July, but we're gonna we'll have a chat. I'd like to get you back on the show and we'll talk yeah, about sure. sort of just how how the, the team's progressing. Almost like get like a sort of live update from Spirits of Somerset yeah, and see good, how yeah. you guys are getting along. Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be Once good, again, yeah. Justin, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, You've been man. a pleasure. Uh, David? That's all right, mate. It's been a pleasure. You have a good one, mate. Okay. Take all care, right. mate. So, yeah, everybody, that was Justin from Spirits of Somerset. Absolutely wicked to have him on the show and to have a chat with him. Let me just put my frame up. There we go. That's a lot better. Right. Now, once again, fans, Massive shouts out to Spirits of Somerset, out to Justin and out to Cheryl. Now, do hold your horses. Do not go anywhere. Got some really, really cool shows coming up for you here on the HAPRC Network and on the Demonologist UK. Um, next week, you will have me by myself. Yes, next week I will be talking. I'm going to be answering your questions. I'm going to be just doing some random stuff. There's a lot of things that because I have people on the show all the time, I try to get this, like, I want to give you guys the best content I can give you. So I like to get guests on the show to get their points of view and their opinions. But next week is literally going to be me on my own. I'm going to be answering all your questions. I'm going to be answering. And Joe, you know what? You can ask me anything to do with the paranormal, and I will try and give you an opinion on it. The week after is a big one. Now, let me just check my schedule, but I'm pretty sure the week after we have the one and the only Kay Maloney on the show. Yes, we do. Kay Maloney, Kabbalistic worker and media, Kabbalistic medium. She is going to be on the show and I'm hoping, I'm praying she's going to be doing live readings for, your guys, for you guys. It's going to be amazing. Kay, I've had a personal reading from Kay live on the show and it was really really good so if you are interested in getting yourself a reading a cabalistic reading something a little bit different because you know what we like to do here on the demonologist uk we like to do things a little bit different give you that juicy juice for the demos out there it's worth coming on the week after guys the week after i have renowned author tom warrington on the show we're going to be talking about his book we're going to be talking about his life in the paranormal that he's managed to spend all that time writing it down. And it's going to be an absolute amazing one. And then after that, we have the legend that is Jacqueline Dixon on the week after that. It's going to be, honestly, guys, we, we've got all the presenters coming on from the HAPRC network. We're going to find out about them, guys. Um, before we go any further, I just want to send a massive shout out to Jane, out to Ames, out to Neil and out to Ant last night, who done the live feed from the haprc center the demon files i really really enjoyed that it was a really 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 good show and um yeah don't forget the official merch it's going to be up there by the end of the week on cat face merch if you head over to their facebook page that's facebook.com forward slash cat face merch they're going to be doing the official now it's going to be a limited print on them but they're going to be doing the official T-shirts. It wasn't me. It was the demons. That is going to be available hopefully by the end of the week. I mean, I've sent the design over. It looks, um, I, I like it. It looks really cool. So, guys, don't forget next week, it's all about you. It's your show. You, the listener, you guys that are there in the chat room. It's going to be brilliant. Once again, thanks to Justin Clifford for coming on tonight. I've been Damon Penny. This has been a Demonologist UK, and until next week, don't forget, guys, look after yourselves. <laughs>